Module 2, Part 1, Lesson Planning and Use of Resources for Language Teaching Part 1. Planning and Preparing a Lesson or Sequence of Lessons Unit 18, Identifying and Selecting Aims How do we identify and select aims? Aims are what we want learners to learn or be able to do at the end of a lesson or a whole course. The aim of a lesson may also be listening to a story for encouraging a positive attitude towards the foreign language. We need to ask ourselves these two questions to identify the most appropriate aims. This will help us to choose the right aims for a particular group of learners. Look at the table. Can you notice the difference between main aims, subsidiary aims, and personal aims? Pause the video to notice the differences. Lesson aims are essential in guiding teaching and learning. A main aim describes the primary goal of a lesson or sequence of lessons. Subsidiary aims support the main aim by specifying necessary language or skills. Personal aims for teachers focus on self-improvement in teaching. Unit 19. Identifying the components of a lesson plan. The main components of a lesson plan show us what the lesson is for, which means the aims, and secondly, what the teacher and the learners will do during the lesson and how they will do it. A lesson shows us where we are going and how we are going to get there. Here are some ways a lesson plan helps the teacher. Before the lesson is about establishing the aims and the procedures. During the lesson is knowing the amount of time for each stage. After the lesson is about keeping the plan as a record. A lesson plan can include the following headings, timetable fit, main aim, subsidiary aims, personal aims, assumptions, anticipated language problems, possible solutions, teaching aids, procedures, timing, interaction patterns, and homework. It is a good idea to anticipate possible problems and solutions. Also, we may not have personal aims for every lesson, and we may not always give learners homework. Look carefully at this example of a lesson plan which aims to introduce and practice language for giving advice. Take notes of the timing, procedures, subsidiary aims, aids, and materials, and interaction pattern. Unit 20. Planning an individual lesson or a sequence of lessons. We need to think about individual lessons aims and the appropriate techniques for a particular group of learners. If we are introducing a new grammatical structure, we might choose a PPP or a TBL approach. A sequence of lessons is a number of related lessons that develop language knowledge and or skills. Look at the examples of sequence of lessons presented in the video, which are structural sequence, integrated skill sequence and project work. Key concepts and the language teaching classroom. It's a good idea to make lesson plans look as simple as possible. A lesson plan should be clear and easy to read during the lesson. Variety is very important both in a sequence of lessons and in a single lesson. There are several different ways of introducing variety into lessons. Here is a list of things we can vary. Pace, interaction pattern, skill, level of difficulty, content, mood, exciting or calming activities. Unit 21. Choosing assessment activities. How do we choose assessment activities? Assessment means collecting information about learners' performance to make judgments about their learning. We may choose to assess formally, and we can also carry out informal assessment. Informal assessment is a way of checking how our learners are getting on, but of course we can't assess all our learners all the time during lessons. Key concepts, what are the differences between formal and informal assessment? We can summarize the differences between formal and informal assessment under the headings of assessment tasks, marking and purpose. Key concepts and the language teaching classroom formal assessment. Formal assessment can consist of tasks with single answers, multiple choice questions, also real life tasks, such as oral interviews to get information about learners' general ability to use spoken and written language. We need to make sure that assessment tasks are not too difficult or too abstract for young learners. Informal assessment, the amount of informal assessment we do depends on a number of things. The size of the class, the age of the learners, informal assessment is especially useful for young learners for whom formal test tasks are often too abstract, the language knowledge or skills we want to assess, the frequency of formal tests or examinations. It is important for learners to know that we are assessing them and to know how and when we are doing it.